Less than 37 hours of breathable air estimated. That's all the Coast Guard estimates is left for the five people on board a submersible that disappeared on a voyage to visit the Titanic wreckage at the bottom of the North Atlantic. A massive search and rescue effort continues some 900 miles east of Cape Cod to find that vessel, which launched on Sunday. On board is Stockton Rush. He's the CEO of Ocean Gate. That's the expedition company that operates the submersible. Also are with them are four other passengers. CNN's Miguel Marquez has the latest from Newfoundland where the submersible started its journey. It's a, this is a complex search. A complex search, now more complicated by time, which they're running out of. We know there's about, uh, there's about 40 hours of, of breathable air uh, left. Deep water submersibles and gear converging on St. John's Newfoundland from the U.S. and Canada. It's the closest land to the search zone. If the Titan can be found, they'll need to bring all resources to bear as quickly as possible. You're dealing with a surface search and a subsurface search, and frankly, that makes it an incredibly complex operation. The five-person submersible started its dive around 9 a.m. Newfoundland time on Sunday. Its last contact with its mothership, the Polar Prince, was an hour and 45 minutes into a dive expected to last just over nine hours. At 6.35 p.m. Newfoundland time on Sunday, the sub was reported missing when it failed to surface at the scheduled time of 6.10 p.m. The vessel has oxygen for five people for about four days, but oxygen is only one critical element. If they are alive and they're in there, they're going to be at almost freezing temperatures, assuming they lost all their power. That's why they can't communicate. It's going to be dark, uh, cold. Um, and oxygen is their, their, their most precious resource. So consuming that, staying calm, sleeping. The vessel and search area, extremely isolated and deep, roughly 460 miles south of St. John's, Newfoundland, and 900 miles east of Boston, and possibly more than two miles below the surface where pressure is nearly 6,000 pounds per square inch. Those on board, adventuring British billionaire Hamish Harding, Pakistani businessman, father and son, Shahzada and Suleiman Dawood, French explorer, Paul Henry Narjolet, and CEO and founder, Stockton Rush, who owns Ocean Gate Expeditions and the missing sub. So I want to give you a sense of what's happening here at St. John's Harbor right now. This is the Horizon Arctic. It's the sister ship to the Polar Prince. We believe this ship may be headed out. There's a C-17 plane from the U.S. that has just landed at the airport here. It is going to bring gear down here. A Coast Guard ship from the Canadian Coast Guard just left the harbor here and is on its way to the search zone as well. Just a massive effort and a lot of hope that this one turns out well. Jake? All right, Miguel Marquez uh, in uh, St. John's, Newfoundland. Thank you so much. Let's bring in Mike Reese. Mr. Reese took the same voyage on an Ocean Gate vessel to view the wreckage of the Titanic 11 months ago. Uh, Mike, thanks for joining us. We have a photo of you on your own trip to see the wreckage. Can you tell us what your experience was like on, on the Ocean Gate voyage? Yeah, it sounds a little grand. It in every way, it felt like being uh, a Mercury astronaut. You know, this. This wasn't a vacation. It wasn't tourism. It was, it was exploration. And you're getting on a ship that's uh, the best it could be, but they're learning as they go along. And you, you get on with a lot of excitement, but just constant trepidation, constantly knowing this could be the end. And in fact, I was supposed to go with my wife, and she tested positive for COVID right before we got on. And so I kissed her goodbye, knowing I, that that might be the last time I'd ever seen her. So nobody walked into this, you know, thinking it was going to be a pleasure cruise. And uh, especially the, the, the experts on ball, Stockton Rush, you know, they made it as safe as they could make it. They trusted their own lives to it, but they knew uh, it could end this way. Mm hmm you did a podcast about your trip and you described how the ship is controlled by a joystick from a gaming console, much like an Xbox controller. Uh, tell us uh, about the technology and how it works. Yes, I, a lot of people have, have focused on that as if 
this is some some jerry rigged uh you know crazy little jalopy that's been slapped together but it's one of the most reassuring things about the submarine is how very simple it was it's a pressure resistant tube that basically drops to the bottom of the ocean it took two and a half hours to go kind of straight down and I actually fell asleep on the on the trip down. That's how kind of relaxing and meditative the whole thing is. And once you reach the ground, the ship is sort of piloted by two things that just look like a fan you would have on your desk. Very simple. And it is controlled by a joystick from a gaming console so that even I was able to steer and navigate the, the submarine for a while. And again, these are all to the good. I mean, simplicity, I think, would be having something overly complicated where you're uh, at the mercy of a lot of technology nobody understands. Yeah. Um, you also uh, talked uh, on your podcast about how you had to sign a waiver that warned you at least twice that you could die. Um, I want to show this little clip. CBS News reported on this Ocean Gate submersible uh, and described another time when the ship got lost. Uh, let's take a listen. There's no GPS underwater. So the surface ship is supposed to guide the sub to the shipwreck by sending text messages. Turn 30 degrees right? Probably yeah, 30 degrees. But on this dive, communications somehow broke down. The sub never found the wreck. We were lost. We were lost for two and a half hours. So this, this appears to have happened before, at least, uh, getting, getting lost and losing communications. I have to say, I took four different dives with the company, one to the Titanic and three off of New York City. And communication was lost at least briefly every single time. It just seems baked into the system. I don't, I don't blame the submarine as much as I blame deep water, but you would always lose it and come back. And one thing is just the the safety involved of these kind of things where uh, there was one dive we took. As soon as communication went out, we went right back to the surface. We were we had mm. gone to see a new boat just off the shore of New York. And we saw we saw it for one second and they said, we're going back up. We, we shouldn't be down here. So. You know, they're not hot dogs. They're not daredevils here. They, they take this very seriously. Well, let's hope this story has a happy ending. Mike Reese, thank you so much. Appreciate it.